Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Star Wars Hot Toys 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review. Today we're taking a look at the KX Enforcer Droid based off its appearance in the Purge of Mandalore scene from Book of Boba Fett on Disney+. Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They do have pay in for and a loyalty program. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, it's relatively uninspired actually. It's just done in the usual Star Wars style. We've got an image of the KX Enforcer Droid looking like a total rust bucket on the front of the packaging, and yes, that is the actual figure. Star Wars down below in a metallic foil print, and the wraparound banner. We've got another image of KX off to the side, and on the other side, Jabba slash Boba's palace on Tatooine? Why? I get it, I think they wanted to use this image to signify, hey, this guy is from the Book of Boba Fett. Although, it's not character specific at all. These KX droids, they were only seen in one scene, the Purge of Mandalore. Wouldn't that have made more sense for the banner? This image, this just hammers that point home even further. We've got the KX droid on a mound of debris with a Mando helmet after he's surely just slaughtered him. And that certainly didn't happen on Tatooine, at least as far as I can remember. Around the back, warnings and legal info. Pretty boring. Now there has been a little bit of debate as to the finish of the KX Enforcer Droid. Ah, the Purge of Mandalore. Thank you, Hot Toys. There it is. At least it was represented somewhere on the packaging. Where was I? Oh, that's right. The finish. So, people, they wanted this guy to be filthy. Based off the prototype, which was filthy, that's the finish that people were expecting. Then we got the blogger pictures and he looked less filthy. Well, First in-hand impressions, what does he look like? Oh, you all don't have anything to worry about. This droid is very well weathered. What we are going to do now though is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first, which is actually reuse. We have seen this display base before with the battle damaged Mark 85. It's nice and thin, which is a good thing, seeing as KX is already tall enough, we don't need to give him an added height boost in the display. There's this kind of mottled, sandy, rubble-like texture on the surface. There's this lighter speckling of yellow paint to make it look like sand. And then for the big hunks of rubble, there's some red shading. I don't remember Mandalore being particularly red, however, that's just the colour they decided to go with. At the very least, it will be a nice pop in the display. Then up top, a translucent pole and a spring-loaded waist clamp. This accessory, I love. It works on so many levels. It can just be some set dressing placed on the display base as though KX has slain a Mandalorian and there lies his helmet. Or you can have him holding it. Or you can give it to the armorer and pop it in her covert. Maybe she's using this to refurbish some armor for a foundling. Who knows? Like I said, it works for multiple different things. It's filthy. There's dirt and grime everywhere. A couple of areas where the dirt has been chipped away so you can see the blue underneath. This is very clearly a Death Watch helmet. At least I think it is. The visor is smoky and you can make out the little comms port. On the inside, unfortunately, no, there is no neck connector. You can't actually pop this on a Mando. When it comes to blasters, we have two options. The first of which is the SE-14R blaster pistol, which we have seen before. It's a reused mold. There's some texture on the grip as well as a little logo and some little greebly bits and pieces around the place. Then it is painted in matte black with just so much silver dry brushing on the surface, it looks nice and metallic. Then for the E22, you can see what used to be an E11, there's the stock that would fold back normally. And around the back, the new stock looking much more tactical. A pop of red, a flashlight, and two barrels, both painted in gunmetal. What we are going to do now, though, is get the KX Enforcer Droid itself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses, or accessories, or anything like that. The number one reason why I'm sure a lot of you are tuning in, maybe not all of you, you want to know, can you use KX as your K2SO stand-in if you missed out on K2 back in the day? Say you weren't collecting at the time, or you just weren't interested, but now you are, and you need a K2 in your collection. Does this one fit the bill? 
yes, of course, it's the same mold, it's the same proportions, and he's got the same great features, the LED moving eyes, the die-cast content, and he's just a tall, imposing droid. The only difference, the one hang-up, the finish. This figure is completely filthy. From head to toe, there is weathering, and K2SO, he was a pretty clean-looking droid. If that doesn't bother you, then what are you waiting for? This is your new K2. Up close and personal, kicking things off with KX's head sculpt. It looks a lot like K2's head sculpt. And that's by design. It is K2's head sculpt. This entire droid is K2. It is reuse from top to bottom. The sculpt, the shape is good and it looks accurate. I particularly like these little tusks on the front that you do have to be careful of when it comes to posing. Just grab the head sculpt top and bottom, don't grab it from the front. The last thing you want is to snap off these teeny tiny little tusks. I also have his eyes turned on, there's this grill over the top of the eyes that I'm fairly certain is made of metal. And the eyes are poseable. If you take off the top dome, you can then move these little posts around and pose the eyes. We will talk about that in a lot more detail a little bit later. On the underside of the head sculpt, we've got all this little greebly stuff done in silver with washers in the crevices to bring out all of that sculpt work. On one side of the head sculpt, a red switch or button or light of some kind. And on the other side, it's completely smooth. So it's an asymmetrical design. Is it just me, or do the KX droids look kind of skeletal? That very skinny, spindly neck with sections that you can see straight through? It just reminds me of a big frickin' droid skeleton. And maybe that's what they were going for, I'm not sure. The finish is awesome, it's done in gunmetal, and then we have this silver chipping everywhere, and over the top of that, this speckling of metallic, kind of rusty orange paint to make him look even more disheveled. One of the best parts about Star Wars designs is they can take familiar stuff like this back box that you normally see on Stormtroopers, slap it on a droid, and you immediately know just by seeing the back of this droid, hey, that droid is Imperial. Got the circle with some sculpt work around the edges, some red little dots, and you also have the line work plus some antennas that you do have to install. When you do install them, after you push them in, they do sit in there very nice and securely. Just be careful of them. Like the tusks on the front of the head sculpt, you don't want to put too much pressure on the antennas. There's more silver chipping around the edges, more red details down below, and just so much sculpt work. And over the top of all of that, that speckling of that rusty shading. Okay, so the going theory currently is that Hot Toys turned down the weathering so that people who missed out on K2 the first time round can get the KX droid and use this as a K2SO stand-in. I don't think that's a thing. I reckon it's pretty close to the prototype. All of the weathering, that surface detail, that mottled texture that's supposed to be there is. And you've got that silver scratching and chipping as well. In fact, if you compare it to the prototype, all of these spots where it is worn and scratched, it's almost identical to that figure, just maybe a little bit softer. One of my favorite details around the front, these yellow sections, they just add a much needed pop of color on an otherwise very gray and gunmetal figure. We've got silver chipping around the edges and also that speckling of that brown metallic paint, so it looks rusty. Once again, I know I've already said that. And when the light hits it, it does glisten. This guy looks like metal. And the funny thing is, certain sections are metal. These biceps, they're die cast. And his legs, they're metal as well. The arms on KX are very, very long and also super skinny. And maybe that's why they use the metal. Knowing full well that there would be a lot of pressure on various bits and pieces as you're trying to pose KX, going with metal makes it a touch more sturdy. The Imperial symbol on both sides for his shoulder pads are nicely scuffed and worn away. And for the joints, there is no clear plastic in the middle. That is a functional joint with a hole straight through it, which is accurate to the design. Then his fingers, they're all individually articulated. I don't want to say the same thing over and over again, like speckling and silver dry brushing and washes and whatnot. It's just the best way to describe what's going on with the finish. I've said it all, so let's move on to the sculpt work. For the abdomen section, it thins out a lot. It's got this V taper where you can see right the way through it. And on the underside of the torso, 
there's even some silver paint on the inside and some sculpted detail. Underneath the shoulder pads, more sculpted detail for these little pistons, which matches the tops of the legs. It ties everything together. If you're wandering around the back, if there's more sculpted detail tucked up underneath the upper torso, yep, this abdomen section all the way around, including around the back, there's unique sculpt work and little bits of detail, little greeblies and stuff like that all over the entire thing. There's even some grills on the butt panel. KX's legs are so skinny and they're also just very, very long. The upper torso's pretty small, then the legs, they go on for days. The knee joints, see-through just like the elbows, same thing with the ankles. And the calf sections, they're made of metal, which means with all of this weight down below, KX is nice and planted. The feet are pretty big, which also provides a good footprint to keep KX standing in the collection. There's more dry brushing, there's more of that rusty effect all over, and the weathering, the battle damage, if you will, is asymmetrical. The print on this side doesn't match the other side. It's not like they've just taken the one stencil and flipped it and used it on this side as well. No, it's unique from one side to the other. And on the underside of the feet, there's even some sculpt work down here. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, on the left, the KX Enforcer Droid from Book of Boba Fett, and on the right, K2SO from Rogue One. K2 is the same height, he's the same build, he has the same proportions, it, after all, is the exact same figure. The only difference the finish. KX is just so much dirtier all round. Now, you could, maybe, if you wanted to, if you didn't care about him being so clean, use the KX droid as your K2SO. At the end of the day, it's all up to personal preference. I'm sure there are some people out there who just prefer the look of KX. Having more surface detail is never a bad thing. And who's to say that K2 wasn't completely filthy until he was repainted by Cassian? We'll have to wait and see in Andor Season 2. Now, KX is significantly taller than Jin. If you wanted to display these two together, this height difference looks accurate to me. Going over articulation, starting off with KX's head sculpt. It's on a double ball peg. Combined, looking forward to there, more than enough range to look down at the mandos he's killing. Looking up to there, swivel and pivot side to side. The shoulder pads do drop down, so you don't get any paint scuffing. The arms will go up to there. They will go all the way around 360, and it's a butterfly joint, meaning it'll go forward and up and down. Just don't forget to close the gap with the shoulder pad. Have a swivel at the bicep, single bend at the elbow that gets you to 90, a swivel at the wrist, and a hinge for forward and back. The upper torso is on a ball joint, meaning it crunches forward and back, further back than forward, swivel and pivot side to side. The legs do hinge forward, but also out at the same time. It's just the nature of how the joint's been designed. It's on an angle, so yes, they will hinge out as well. They do pivot side to side up the top just a little. Swivel above the knee and a ratcheted single bend that does go past 90. The ankles are hiding in plain sight. You can see the teeth for the ratchet and they are super, super sturdy, which is a great thing. This guy is very, very heavy. If they weren't sturdy, he would topple over constantly. You do have some pivot side to side and lastly, toe articulation. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things. The first annoying thing is, remember when Hot Toys used to do stuff like this? When they included a spare helmet just as set dressing or to have around the display base, they were fully detailed on the inside. Well, not anymore. With this Mando helmet, it's not wearable by any Mandos, there is no neck connector, and it's not detailed. It just feels cheap all round. Speaking of cheap all round, the second annoying thing is the display base. And no, not the fact that it's reuse. I'm actually fine with that. When we first saw this with the Battle Damage Mark 85, it was a much darker colour, and that darker finish, it hid all of the soft, mushy sculpt work. Now that they've done it again, but in a much lighter colour, with the red highlighting all of the rubble, it just comes across, like I said, soft and mushy. This sculpt work, it's just not sharp enough in my opinion. The third annoying thing is one that they absolutely could have fixed. With K2SO, it was the exact same thing. With the LEDs turned off, the droid looks completely dead and deactivated and lifeless. They could have done a couple of things to fix this. Number one, have switch out eyes. Number two, have a switch out top head plate, so when you install the new one, the eyes are painted. 
or just done them in frosted white plastic. So the light still would have passed through with the LEDs, but without them, it wouldn't have looked completely dead. The first cool thing, the sneaky diecast content. This is not billed as a diecast figure. They didn't need to use any metal at all. I'm glad they did, just like with K2SO, the legs are diecast and the biceps are diecast as well. Turns out K2SO, he's the gift that keeps on giving. The second cool thing, moving eyes, which I didn't know about. Call me a noob when I reviewed K2 back in the day. I didn't read the instructions, I didn't know the eyes could do this. They can. You take off the top of the dome, then you can move these little posts around to help the KX droid or K2SO, if you have him, emote. So when you reinstall the top of the head sculpt, now you can see the eyes are ever so slightly off to the side. The third cool thing is he does match the prototype weathering. Some people thought that it was a step down and it wasn't as weathered. It is. If you compare it to the picture on the front of the box, yes, it looks a hell of a lot sharper on the packaging. But the figure itself does have all of the exact same marks in the same places as the picture on the front of the box. It's just that whoever was taking that photo and editing it and putting it on the packaging and doing all of the promo pics, they may have slid that sharpness and definition slider just a touch too high. Still, all of the detail is present on the figure. Wrapping up on Hot Toys K2, sorry, KX Enforcer Droid. This is the droid from the Book of Boba Fett. Remember that one scene, that little one shot where they were killing Mandos during the Purge of Mandalore? Yep, that was the droid. Hot Toys, you sneaky devils. We know exactly why you made this. You saw the price of K2 or the aftermarket going up and up and up. And you thought, hey, I want a bit of that cheddar. We saw these guys for a split second, that's all we needed, let's make the KX Enforcer Droid. And I wouldn't be surprised if they use this mold again for the Jedi Fallen Order slash Jedi Survivor version of the KX Droid. This is a great figure though, I cannot complain, the build quality, the proportions and the finish. It is stunning. It's weathered, it's dirty, it's grimy, it's everything it needs to be to both be accurate to the show and give you more detail on an otherwise very sharp mold. K2 was pretty clean. This one is the opposite of that. If you're hoping to use this as a K2 and you don't mind the weathering, there is nothing stopping you. Totally go ahead and grab this figure to use as K2SO in your collection. Or maybe not. Maybe you want to have this guy along with a bunch of Death Watch Mandos being absolutely demolished, recreating the Purge of Mandalore in your collection, you sick bastard. Nah, that would look pretty cool as well. Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They do have pay in for and a loyalty program. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button. If you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.